Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So um, this is kind of like a redo, somewhat. Um, so Tilson PR, uh, one of the PR firms for, uh, or I guess the PR firm for Corvin, uh, a couple months ago sent me uh, some screw cap things that Corvin has, I think they've now released them. Uh, but I got these almost two months ago and um, as a pre-release because as soon as they announced it I uh, emailed Corvin and said hey I'd like to test the product so a lot of times happened in between since uh, they con since they said yes they sent me the stuff I recorded an episode uh, using it or trying to use it but unfortunately they sent me um, one size and there's actually two sizes and they sent me the large size and uh, all the wine bottles that I had that were screw cap, which was a total of two. Um, that's what I randomly had in the house. Uh, I guess are standard size. So uh, I was really, really upset. Uh, the video even shows me being not happy um, that you know they didn't give me the second size. So um, I uh, that night I reached out to uh, them and said, "Hey, it'd be really nice if you could send me the second size." And uh, because I can't really give a recommendation at all uh, if I post the video, which I didn't because since they replied back like the next day and said, we're really sorry, we'll send you what you need, um, I was like, cool. And uh, But the problem was I had recorded like three or four of the videos that same night. So those have all been on hold um, because they, they kind of reference this video. So honestly, off the top of my head, I can't remember if those other videos I mentioned anything about these not working or anything. If I did, well, you can ignore those comments, at least until you watch the rest of the videos. I have no idea how this works yet. Again, first, just like my wine reviews, I don't do this stuff. I don't try it out ahead of time. Um, and I did try the Corvin out ahead of time. I want to make sure I knew what to do um, with it. But anyway, so what is this? Well, first of all, as you can see, I have four of the same wine. Now, these are not super high quality gruners. I mean, these were, I bought them at Costco for $11.89. So they're, they're fairly inexpensive gruners. Um, the, uh, the, the company that uh, I guess imports them is Winemonger. Um, it's the um, Franz Etz uh, Gruner Veltliner. Um, it says Osterreich on the back of the bottle. It just says Austria on the front. And the, uh, the company says it's from uh, the Comptal, which is, uh, is, which is in uh, the uh, Niederösterreich, uh, Lower Austria, which is the northeastern part of Austria. Um, so as far as the actual appellation, don't know, but we know these are a product of Austria. And I bought them, one, because they're reasonable enough that I can buy four bottles. And they, um, I don't drink enough Gruner. And while these may not be purely classic examples of Gruner, um, they should be close enough for me to get flavor profile, hopefully get that down. And uh, not realize until I already got through the checkout, these are one liter bottles. Uh, but they look like the necks are standard size. But when I held them, I was like, man, these bottles feel kind of big. And didn't have a cart. And so I'm carrying three bottles. My dad's carrying like one. I'm like, like my hand was starting to hurt. And I was like, I looked as a one liter bottle and you can't tell until you look at the bottom of the bottle. If you can't find anything on the label, it has to be put on the bottle somewhere. At least in the United States it does. Um, so it's 100 centiliters, which is the European way of them saying one liter. Um, all right, so uh, I have four bottles. This bottle will be the bottle that I put the Corvin cap on. That's what it's called. And um, I will you know, taste the wine out of that bottle. I'll give a review of it. And then approximately one uh, for one, every month, every 30 days, which may be a little difficult because it is September 21st and 30 days from now or four weeks or 
four weeks from now, I will still be in uh, uh, Bur excuse me, Burgundy. So the first test will be slightly longer than a month uh, or slightly shorter than a month, depending on how I do it, um, to, uh, to test, test it. But each of these bottles will be, I guess, control bottles. So I will take the first bottle, I will pour a glass with that, and then I'll just open up the screw cap here and pour a fresh, fresh thing and compare the two to see how they taste. And this will be month one, month two, month three. Uh, according to Corvin, these things should be able to hold a wine fresh for about three months. Um, they come in two different, you can buy in two different ways. Uh, they're both six packs. You can have one's called the variety pack, which has two standard two sizes. The standard, which they'll put give you four, and then the large, which will be two of these. Or you can get just the standard pack, which will be six of the standard packs. Um, this is how they came to me from Tilson. Uh, so there's one of each in the pack right here. Um, there's actually a, um, there's actually a little uh, instruction on how to do it. So let's open this up. Um, little silica stuff. All right, so you'll see that one has a white cap and one has a black cap. Uh, that tells you which size is which, and I'm not gonna go by memory because it's been like five weeks since I actually looked at the instructions. Got instructions on how to do it. There's also a video on Corbin that tells you how to do it. Um, let's see here. Standard, the one with the white is a standard, and one with the black is the larger uh, larger screw cap, which is the one that they gave me. Um, and you can, it's hard to tell on the camera, but you can tell there, there is a difference in sizes. So this should fit effectively all screw caps. I'm gonna be really upset if, because these are one liter bottles, that it doesn't fit and I have to buy more wine. So I may have to re-record this. Uh, anyway, um, so what Corvin says to do is you unscrew the cap here you immediately put one of these on and then you can use it. Um, you're still getting some oxygen in there. That's why they're saying is it can go for three months because a little bit of oxygen in that little space, which there's a technical term for that. I already forgot what it is. Um, anyway, um, it's not that much oxygen. So you can put it back on there um, and then you can use the Corvin for the rest of the time. So it's not going to get a whole hell of a lot of oxygen, um, probably about as much as you know, three months of oak aging, barrel aging, I would guess, except it's all in one shot and then it just kind of sits there. Um, they also say to press in the liner, um, which I'm going to do right now. I guess that gets it to that, gets it up into the the last thread. I'll do This one, you can really feel that there's a difference. The other one, there wasn't as much of a difference when I pressed it in. Let me do that one more time. Okay. Um, yeah, it says, don't pour any wine out. Just unscrew it and put the thing in. Uh, then it gives you how to um, rinse it and all that. Uh, so real quick on the wine, this is the 2015 Franz uh, Ertz, right? Ertz? Etz, not Ertz. Franz Etz Gruner Veltliner um, from Austria. So let's go ahead and, well, I've already gone eight minutes. Okay, assuming the standard one's what's gonna fit on here. So let's take this thing off, put this thing on. It works. Okay, so we've done that. Then we got our little trusty Corvin. By the way, they also, because of kind of the, you know, the inconvenience, uh, they also sent me some uh, extra capsules gas capsules. Uh, they also say that the Corvin says that this is good for up to about 50 punctures. So um, we got that going on. See, it works just fine. Uh, definitely lots of little bubbles from just the gas. All right. Boom. Okay. Easy peasy in and out. Look at all that bubbles in there. Okay, so that'll be, I, want to call it the, I don't know if that's the control bottle. That's, I guess these are control bottles. That's the test bottle. All right, so let's, let's check out the wine. Um, I'm super excited the thing worked. Um, I, 
just before we even get into the wine itself, I think this is phenomenal. I've also heard that Corbin is working on something for sparkling wine. Um, I don't know exactly what it was. One of my coworkers at my day job, uh, I guess he also has another job uh, working at uh, a, a wine store. And I guess the Corbin people were in there and they were talking about this, uh, this thing. Um, so let's, so that'd be really cool. I mean, at that point, they'll have everything effectively except for like, you know, port wines, you know, wines that have like, you know, like a cap with a, with a cork underneath, you know, but fortified, fortified wines in general can last quite a while, maybe not th three, six months, <laughs> um, without any type of preservation system, but they can last a while. All right. So, uh, let's get into the wine. Uh, definitely, uh, got some good aromatics going on here. Uh, this is all room temperature, so it's not all chilled. Uh, definitely some aromatics going on. Um, is, that, is it peppery? Yeah, a Gruner's supposed to have white pepper in it. it. Doesn't mean if you smell white pepper, you have Gruner. But I mean, that's that's that is a characteristic of it. Um, there is a there's a slight bit of slight little, little spice component to it, pepperiness to it. Um, some peaches, white peaches, some melon, really not a lot of melon though. Some more peaches, a touch of lime. I'd even go so far as saying, uh, some tangerine, maybe nectarine, uh, some white flowers. But it really is dominated by the spice component, by by the by the pepper. I mean, on, honestly, if I put my nose in here, I'd be like, "Well, I'm in Gruner Camp, and let's just narrow it down." At that point, which I still have to figure out, what was it Vakao or Comtal or Kremstal or you know which one? I mean, as long as I say Nieder Ausreich, I don't know if I said that right, but I just like I like pretending I can pronounce German or Germanic language words. And I don't really detect any oak, which there shouldn't be. It's pretty acidic. Um, it's really, it's really dry. Um, the flavor of the palate flavor flavor profile on the palate is very much like the nose. Um, the spice is more anything else on there. Um, it's only 12 and percent alcohol. I just think it's just cause it's room temperature. It feels a little hot. Yeah. It's not a lot of alcohol medium, if you will, on the alcohol. Um, but it's, it's very um, tart. Um, it's not just the acid, the high acid part. Uh, it's very tart, uh, the fart, so it's fruit. Uh, so tart lime, not really lemon. Um, and then you've got some of that peach. I don't really get any of the tang tangerine or, or, um, or uh, uh, nectarine or orange, whatever I said from the nose. Um, don't really get any of the melon though, either. It's, it's really just kind of tart lime, tart, peaches um i mean if i didn't know any better i'd probably call this a pinot grigio is it tasty is it refreshing absolutely it's 12 bucks and i got a costco so um pro tip for costco at least in probably most states, but at least in the state of Texas, you do not have to be a member to buy wine in a Costco because the state prevents them from uh, requiring membership to buy uh, alcohol, or at least wine, um, because of the type of license that Costco has in Texas. They can only sell wine and beer inside Costco, but then there's an independent liquor store next to Costco. And the reason for that is in Texas, you can't be open on Sunday if you sell liquor. Um, so if you live in a state that allows that, well, realize that 
There are 50 states plus the territories, and they all have the right to create their own liquor laws. Um, for instance, in my state, um, if you sell liquor in your restaurant, um, you cannot bring a bottle of wine. No matter how great the wine is, you can't legally bring in a bottle of wine. The restaurant can't open it up. They can't charge a corkage fee, none of that stuff. Now, if they don't sell liquor in their establishment, so they have either no liquor license or a beer and wine license, then yes, a person can bring in a bottle of wine. If the restaurant allows it. You know, wants wants to let you do it, and they can charge a corkage fee and all that. Uh, some states they regulate the corkage fee. Some states you don't need to do a corkage fee. Uh, some say you have to, but it's up to the restaurant. So I mean, and other states just don't allow it either. So it it, it it's it's kind of funny when you work live in a state like mine and that has a lot of restrictions, and somebody works you know lives lives or comes from a state that doesn't, and they want to do this, do that. Well, I do it at so and so. Uh, I do at your restaurant chain and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's different state law. And they kind of look at you like you're you're lying to them. And I'm like, I'm not lying to you. It's just, well, I went to so-and-so in your city. Well, they're breaking the law. Anyway, um, we don't. Okay, so um, it's freshing. It's uh, very nice. It's light. Um, we're, we're really not quite at the end of summer. Today's the last day of summer or tomorrow? But we're like right at the end. So as a summer wine, um, we're done. So uh, by the time you see this, you, summer will be over. But um, definitely refreshing wine. I'm going to read the back label to let you know what they say. Um, it says layers of fruit notes and tickles you with perky acidity. Gruner's the answer to the heart of long summer of a long summer day as well as to the artichokes refusal to pair with anything. This is the, I don't really like artichokes, but that's like the classic, what do you pair with artichokes? Gruner is the one that they always say. Uh, the Gruner, the Gruner is a wine that is not on your side while everyone else is not, as a wine that is on your side whew, while everyone else is not a friend. All right. Anyway, um, it's tasty. It's not expensive. Um, We'll see how it stands up for the three months. Cool. Talk about Burgundy real quick. The other videos probably I had probably talked about Burgundy, but now that I've recorded this after those, I'm almost there. I'm not almost there. Yeah, I'm almost getting ready to go. I've got three appointments right now. Um, I've sent out a bunch of emails to friends, colleagues, my distributors and directly to the wineries. Um, so hint, hint, if you're one of my friends or colleagues, my distributors have, have at least some of my, one of my distributors has come through on some, on some appointments. Um, I probably already emailed you and said, Hey, can you get me an appointment? So hint, hint, I need appointments. Um, because these, a lot of these guys don't want to ask, be asked two weeks out or three weeks out. I mean, I try to, I try to set all this stuff up two to three months out. And I kept getting, don't worry, don't worry, we'll get you set up. And well, I'm worrying because I'm not getting the, the responses yet. So I'm kind of nudging people. Maybe they've already set it up. They just haven't told me. Anyway, um, so if you are in Burgundy or Chablis or Beaujolais, because I'm going to all of those, and you want me to come by and or you know someone in one of those areas and they would love to be on video, shoot me an email, mark at 1337wine.com, and uh, we'll get things going. You know, I'll send out the little information packet, kind of explains how, how it works when I go to the wineries. Um, just know it's about a two to three hour time frame that I need from that person. Um, so I only do two a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. So um, that way I'm not trying to rush through this. Um, and if you want to understand how my interviews go, I would probably look at the last set of Napa Valley interviews from two years ago. Um, that gives you an idea of, of what happens. Uh, a couple of them were really long, but that's because the person I was interviewing was one doing the talking, believe it or not. I just kind of sat there. I was like, this is awesome. Um, anyway, they typically run about 45 minutes to an hour that standard interview does. Um, it really just kind of, they usually organically end at some point. Um, so if you have any suggestions or you just have suggestions like, hey, I went to this place. It's really cool. Let me know. Uh, I have sent a lot of emails to like the top places um, because if I'm spending a lot of money and taking a lot of time to get out there, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not looking to drink Burgonia white and Burgonia red 
and Beaujolais Nouveau. Just, you know, uh, not that we can't do that, but that's not the only places I'm going to go. And not that I expect DRC to reply. Um, I have yet to send them an actual email. I went through somebody else and they haven't replied yet. But, you know, good, good level, uh, good level uh, domains, wineries, chateaus, whatever you want to call them. Um, so I'm real excited about that. Um, you'll see that this video compared to the next few, the camera angle is a little bit higher. Um, I'm getting used to this new selfie stick tripod. Um, here's the remote. I didn't use the remote. I actually used the watch because I'm using Filmic Pro on this video, whereas the other ones, I just used the camera app on the phone. And I had uh, this one, I'm using the front facing camera so I actually can see that it's recording. I can see how the setup is. Whereas the other one, I had a hope and trust that the, the, the uh, phone did not uh, crap out on me. Um, I'm not using my battery case right now on this because it's only the one episode, um, but I recorded four or five episodes in one sitting using my battery case and actually I never even had to get into the battery case. So I've got that set up. I also have a home. I mean, I've, let's put this way. I'm, I'm set. I'm probably, I'm thinking about today uh, before I actually pack for the trip, I may like kind of do video of all the equipment and how it's all packed into my backpack and I just bought some other stuff on Amazon to help. So um, I'm super excited about this trip. And um, I'm, I've also got backup plans on backup plans if I don't get a bunch of Burgundy, Chablis, Beaujolais uh, appointments. Uh, may knock on some people, not literally, but I may uh, right before the trip be like, hey, so-and-so in Alsace, how's it going? I'll make the two and a half hour drive up there or hey, so-and-so down in the Rhone. I've reviewed a lot of your wines. Hey, it's about a two hour drive, two and a half hour drive from, from Bone. Hey, can I stop by and we'll check out your stuff? Why not? I got a weekend to do nothing. Maybe I'll go see Lake Geneva. Who knows? Maybe I'll slip into Italy, which is like a five hour drive. So that I might not actually do that one. Um, I might go into Jura. I might just stick around Bone. Who knows? Who knows what I'll do? Maybe I'll shoot up to Champagne. Not that they can really see me. Um, and a lot of this stuff would have to be on a Saturday because nobody sees anyone on Sunday. But uh, that's going to do it. We're already 20 minutes into this um, for a screw cap review and a wine review. Um, yeah, I'm real excited. Uh, I leave shortly for Burgundy. And um, yeah, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Uh, click the links abo below for information about the wine and the Corvin cap. And uh, hit the donate button over there to help me, uh, help me, I've already paid for all of it. Help me, you know, recover from all the money that I spent to go to Burgundy. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.